part two. What? It's okay. Just make it, and then we'll just I'll just do it. Hi, Aussie. Sorry, that was longer than thirty minutes. I think. Was that longer? Carrie. Oh my gosh. Hi, Carrie. I see you in here. Hi. You guys, we have a new baby wallaby coming in our yard right now. Um, today's your birthday, Mark. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So um, I had to stop because we had the midwife, but she was like so nice. Oh my gosh, Karen, I got to show you this before we finish this. It's the cutest little baby ever. Let's we'll see if I can do it to the screen. I might run away thinking. Hold on. I don't know if you can see the little baby's head popping out, but look how small it is. Hi, Mama. Congratulations. Congratulations. Maybe they came to see Leo. Can you see the little head? Hi, buddy. Um, lots of lots of little babies. All right, so if you guys were in the last broadcast. You have to watch the last broadcast because I'm not going to start all, all the way over. I'm just going to continue to checking. Oh, I don't even remember where I ended. I just, I, roll out to say, just watch my replay. Yeah, you went to. I think the I went to the birthing suite. This is where we ended it. So if you guys want to see the beginning, <laughs> if you want to see the beginning, you have to watch my other broadcast. And um, if you guys are new, my name is Yo Pickles. Hi, and that's James. Where did he go? Oh, over there. And baby Leo. Hi, sports. Sports? Sports is here. Hey, right. And, and Miss Riss, and Karen, and Jack, and so many people. Hi, and Larry. He's so cozy. Glaza. Glaza, yeah. He looks like Leo? Yeah, I think so. I, I think he looks like an Eden, too, but I'm happy with Leo. Um, he's, you're half here. He's so cute. I'll show you guys. Um, hold on, actually, before I do my story, hold on. Sorry, just wait a second. So, I found some baby pictures of me and baby pictures of James. So, that's baby James, which I don't know, and that's baby me, which I feel like he kind of looks like me. Um, maybe the same nose. So, I think, I don't know who, I feel like James and I look the same as a baby. Oh, hi buddy. I look like a doll. I probably, oh, and then this is me as like super baby young. So, I feel like we yeah, I kind of look yeah. like, as a baby, yeah, I kind of feel like I might, he might look like me, but he has James's eyes, and James is like dark complexion and stuff. Anyways. Let's get this done so I can eat lunch. Um, so if you guys missed the first broadcast, I talked about the beginning of my birth story, and then I had to go because the midwife. So continuing, they checked me, I was four centimeters, and I got rushed to the, not really rushed, but they were like, oh, she's four centimeters, like, we gotta get her back there, and blah, 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 blah. So um, we went to the birth suite, and we were there for about 10 minutes, and they came in and popped my water, which, by the way, that was an experience in itself. Like, it was so weird. I know it's maybe TMI for everybody, but... <laughs> It was like so hot and like, I was like, how are you gonna clean? Like the whole table was just like water and there was a lot of it. Anyways, as soon as she put me, she put me up in, hi, hi Roger. She put me up in like the sternum things and she popped my water and it was instant extreme pain. And she was like cleaning up the water when I have my legs up in these sternum things. And she's like, just give me a second. I'm just cleaning up the water and like whatever. And I'm like, in so much pain. So think of being in extreme pain with your legs up in the air like a freaking baby getting changed. It wasn't a good position, but it was not good. So pretty much, I was four centimeters. She popped my water. And then my contraction started intensely happening. <laughs> and that was about maybe 
2.30 or 2.45. Um, and yeah, so I was freaking out and like ripping my clothes off and like in the shower because I was in so much pain and I was like, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. I feel like I had to poo. And um, yeah, I was nothing. I think it was just like his head was down there. And um, she's like, I was like, I want an epidural because I was thinking my sister had like a really long labor and I was like, if I'm going to be in this much pain for, from four, I had, because I was thinking in my head, like I'm four centimeters and I'm in this much pain and I had to get to 10 centimeters. There's no way I can survive. <laughs> there's no way I can survive. So I was like, I want the epidural. I don't care. I don't care. I'm scared of needles, but like, just give me the epidural kind of thing. She's like, why don't we try gas? And so I tried gas, which is very scary to me. I feel like breathing in that deep of gas. I don't know if anybody in here has tried gas, but she's like, you breathe really slow and you just like suck in this gas. And I was, it helped a little bit maybe, but I was so loopy and like out of it from like sucking on this gas. So it's making you really like stoned. Yeah, the gas seems like you're you're pretty much like killing brain cells. Oh, I was just thinking like, this is really weird that this this isn't like natural and like, not that epidural is natural either, but I was like, this feels weird, and I, I don't like being out of control, and it's, I was so stoned from it. Ugh. Anyways, it didn't help the pain. They put me on a ball, and they just said bounce around or whatever, and I was just like breathing this gas in. Here's the epidural story. Maybe I'll get James to be part of this, because I don't really know what was going on at the moment. But they finally get the guy in. So the guy came in, he put the epidural needle in, but it was making her leg like twitch and zap out. So he's like, oh, I think that's hitting a nerve. So he recited it. And then he put it in again, but he stopped and he's like, oh, I just need to get something. So he came back with like a, another doctor who was like, <laughs> a, I guess a senior doctor. And mm -hmm. they were trying to figure things out because what had happened is they put it in a little bit too far and it uh, went into the area that has like the spinal fluid which means if they put that medication in there it'll act like a spinal block which is what you do for a cesarean section and they didn't want to do that because she was in such an active labor stage that it would, it would like paralyze her from here down so they were like umming and ahhing about what to do and then Chelsea's like oh my god I gotta push I gotta push and he just started coming out while they're all standing there debating. There's no way I was only four centimeters. I think I was like six or seven centimeters when I went into the birthing scene. So they said, look, at this stage, we could put, recite the needle again and put it in the right spot, but that's going to take like an hour. So it's better if you just push him out. So, I, I had no control anyways. I was like, yeah. they, they put me on the table to take my blood pressure because I think I was like hyperventilating and just like freaking out. Yeah. Because I was... Yeah, I was in, I was about to give birth. And you just started pushing, and you were pushing so well that he came out within an hour. Yeah, so from 2.45 to 4.39, this is what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah you, kind of got you have to watch the replay days. lane because we are in the middle of it. So, yeah, he came really fast. But I think when they checked, she said, I can feel his head. And he's three centimeters away from your cervix. So when they popped the water, I think it was like pushed down. That's why I felt like I had to poo. And yeah, I'm so glad it was fast. But at the same time, if I could know that it was going to be that fast and that I, if I knew I was six centimeters, I probably would have said no to the epidural because then I would have avoided. So the epidural didn't even work. So it was kind of a waste, even though, by the way, you don't feel it except the zaps. I felt that. But you had contractions while it was doing it. So... I think you were feeling the contraction. I felt the needles going, but it was nothing compared to like what it was. Like what the pain was to a little prick of a needle. I was like, you can prick me all day long with that. Like that was like, what the? That was too fast. Like I think like, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because people will be like, it's good that it was fast, but there was no time to like breathe and well, it just happened too fast. So anyways, when it was time to push, I pushed and he came out. But the ring of fire, that whole thing, that part where his head is coming through, is no joke. That was not good. <laughs> that was terrible. Anyways, not not that you guys care about like this, and it's probably TMI, but I did tear a little bit, but not as bad as 
uh, what most people would as a first mom go in. She, she said that she's just doing it just a little bit, just to hook it up and all that stuff. So, yeah. So, I after birth, like, I I actually don't have any pain down there or anything. Like, I feel like everything is pretty good down there. So people are like, wow, you're walking around and you're like sitting and you're fine and you're looking good and whatever. So I guess I'm healing fast and I never really, so anyways, <laughs> my back hurts a little bit, but actually it's not that bad these last couple of days. The beginning part of this week was like, every time I lifted my leg, I could feel like a kind of pinched nerve or something in my back where the epidural was. But I know, I just, I was about to say there's a freaking plover. Karen would be like, great. <laughs> but yeah, my legs, it's, it was good once I could like start walking. Like I, start, I started doing like morning walks with him and afternoon, we try to go at nighttime when it's like not hot, but I feel like just moving my legs made it better. <sighs> so it's over. <laughs> Miller's saying, Sue, Sue, Sue. So yeah, I was telling James that you had that question, um, but James probably doesn't know. And I'm pretty sure, James signed the paper because I feel like they were like, "Can you sign here for this epidural?" And I was like, "Seriously, mm. I'm not signing anything right now." Like, well, we gave verbal consent or something. They gave us a list of all the risks. But they said it's, they said that it's, it's not like it's uncommon. They said one out of five, three to five hundred people it happens to. <laughs> it's just my luck. It's just, I just gotta accept that it's my well, luck. Other luck is we didn't get the medication. You know, so. Yeah, it would be nice that, but at the same time, like the pushing phase. It doesn't hurt like the contraction phase. The pushing phase was just like, like a big poo. You just want to get it out, but it wasn't coming out, and it was like hard and like you can't breathe and stuff. But like the actual pain before is what the epidural would have helped. But I didn't get it. It was too fast. I wish I could see the future. <laughs> I would have said no if I knew I was six centimeters or seven centimeters. I'd be like I could just deal with it for a few more centimeters. No, I didn't get the headache. Well, I kind of had a tiny one, but it wasn't as bad because I never like got the sleep. medicine. Huh? That was just like the sleep, I reckon. Like the sleep? Yeah. That was saying it's like the worst migraine you've ever had. Well, I feel like it was an icy, I don't know if that makes sense, like an icy headache, which felt like it would be an epidural headache if I had it, but it was just a tiny bit like, and it's usually when I stand up and then it goes away when I sit down. But I think it's going away and it's gone, I think. <sighs> but I made it I made it if you guys missed the beginning of this broadcast you'll have to watch the replay and then watch the other broadcast before here to get the full just coming in this is baby Leo and I put these pictures because these these ones are me and that's James I gotta look through I gotta look through um, I feel like he looks like me in that one like his nose and stuff Oh, he's smiling. Actually, he's not really smiling, but he's kind of smiling. My dad said that that V on his forehead, like all of our family had it, that V thing. So when he, my dad saw him, he was like, oh my gosh, he looks just like you. Um, yeah, I feel like he kind of looks like James. James, you have the same nose, but I think like that picture looks like him, maybe. So the V will go away, yeah. So maybe he's gonna look like me, but this is Leo. Anyways, <laughs> oh thanks. I have to go back and like actually read all the comments because you guys were writing everything and I was not reading them. But yeah, he's a cutie. It's really hard not to like fall in love with him more and more each day, and he's actually like really my coming home story. <laughs> It's like so overwhelming. Coming home is very overwhelming. <laughs> but I think, because I stayed in the hospital for three days, and just being in a busy hospital that like, even in the hospital you don't sleep, because like every five seconds someone's like, do you want to order the TV? Or like, do you want to, like, Sorry. do you want whatever? And I'm just like, let me sleep. It's like so annoying. Anyways, coming home was like, I felt like I was on a, three day crack binge or something like I felt so weird and like cracked out maybe from the gas who knows I felt like so shaky and terrible <laughs> not myself like everything was bothering me like the tv sounds like I don't know if anyone else 
that is like that when they came home from the hospital. But I was like anxiety, panicky, and then like my boobs were starting to hurt, and uh, it was not good. But what's you happened cried. in the last couple of days? You cried when you saw the leaf <laughs> Oh yeah, James's mom like cleaned the house, and I came in, and it was like. Oh my gosh, the house is so clean. And then James' mom got us these flowers. But I'm just going to start crying, like just looking at the flowers, like, oh my God, they're so nice. Yeah, the hormones. Um, and today I cried. What's the show? Mm-hmm. Afterlife. Yeah. Have, has anybody seen Afterlife? Um, what's that guy's name? Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais afterlife and it's like him just really sad because his wife died and like I was watching it and he started talking about I don't know I was like started crying just like this is so sad there's so many people out there that like are that sad and <sighs> anyways that made me cry <laughs> Hoss legs afterlife but I look oh, James looked over James looked over and I'm like tearing up over like this dry comedy I'm, like great <laughs> It'll go away, hopefully, because I don't, I don't want to cry over Leafs and TV anymore. So, with Leo, he uh, wasn't getting enough breast milk. So, we had to go on this little, like, schedule thing where it was, like, pump as much as I could and then do formula. So, we did that for the last two days. And today was the first day he didn't have to do that. So, he's actually back to, like, normal just being normal little babes, open bobs. So I feel like I have confidence and stuff with that whole department. I won't get too much into that because I feel like that's a little bit personal, but yeah, I feel confident with it and it happens. Yeah, he lost, it, it, he had, what is it? You have, they lose 10% of their birth weight and he lost 11%. So they just said do it until he gets his little 1% thing going up again. I'm looking, it's a challenge, yeah, but it's it's good. I feel confident with last night because with that whole thing, I know for a fact he was getting less full feed because it was like topping it up with the formula. So he actually like slept really good and I got like over six hours of sleep last night. So I'm like, it's great. So yeah, anyways, it will get better. Yeah, it's gotten better. Each day is better. So I'm not diabetic anymore. Yeah, as soon as I got the placenta out, it went away. I did have one, hi wild. I did have one day at the hospital where my numbers were like extremely, extremely high, but I also, was it the night that I gave birth? I think it was the night, yeah, it was the first night. So the numbers are supposed to be under 6.7. I know that in America it's not that, but just for example. It had to be under 6.7 and mine were like 16.8 which was like extremely high and I had to take some insulin, but I think it's also like just exhaustion and just gave birth in two hours and, but yeah, since then all my numbers are good and I can eat whatever to a point. I want to keep, I want to keep on the gestational diabetes like food because it's like just pretty much eating clean. So yeah, I think I was pretty stressed out. (laughs) That was like, it was like a couple hours after birth, so. Oh, it's normal to have weird numbers. They're all like freaking out. Oh, you want to see Uncle Brett? Okay, Uncle Brett. Hi, Uncle Brizzlies. Um, James James said that he sees me in a different way after watching me give birth. Yeah, she's super warm. I think all guys feel like that. Hi, Ty Ty. I'm the best pusher. Yeah. How do you know? Because you've never seen anyone else push. Usually you can't get uh, too much Usually I can't get what? A poo out? Yeah. 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 James was a really good cheerleader. Hi. See his little V? No, you were really good. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I talking too loud? Am I talking too loud? Well, he's not going to wake up, but... Soon you'll have baby number two. We'll ask James about that. Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Historic bite, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, my, my, I think my dad said 
we all had the V on our forehead, and then they were saying something about it meaning victory or something. So. <laughs> I think one is trauma traumatized enough of that, that birth. No, thank you. I'm okay. So I'll be extra, extra careful. We have to be extra careful. I'm going to show you guys our backyard right now. Hi. You want some food? You you probably would get make cute babies. I'm just saying. If you throw the one, I don't know the mom. There's so many. There's like. Don't hit him in the head like last time. There's one at the tray, so be careful when you throw it. There's so many. So we started feeding them um, in trays and twice a day and giving them water and our yard is the most popular. Just say It's very popular with animals. You guys, I have to have lunch. So I'm going to hang this up and eat my lunch before baby Leo needs open bobs. So... <laughs> Uh, I know it's really sad pray for Australia it's mostly like just pray for rain it's it's just weird because I haven't really like been on social media and like looking at the news and when I was in the hospital and when I came out it was like overload of like depression comments and not comments just feed news feed is like on fire war like so much better just to keep your phone off <laughs> yeah it's two o'clock I need to eat Yes, I need, I'm going to feed him one more time and then I'll take a nap. You guys need to do some good news news or something. Yeah, we need to do good news news again, definitely. Regular broadcasting will continue soon. <laughs> so depressing. But you guys know, like, the more you open certain links or open certain news, then your algorithm will start showing you more of that. So, like, I've commented on a lot of fire stuff and I've commented on a lot of things. So my news feed is freaking depressing. I need to, like, just not... Look at my news feed. <laughs> so hopefully baby Leo pictures made, made your news feed look a little bit cuter, at least for a second. Vent a lot. <laughs> Cookies. You guys, what's like something that's in your news feed all the time like that you've like realized, like why do, why do I keep seeing this kind of stuff? Do you guys have anything that's like weird? Don't type it because then I'll show up. No, I'm not on Periscope. <laughs> thanks, thanks Shirley. I um, Air travel. Oh, you travel travel stuff. Yeah, everybody put one thing that's positive. Maybe we can do a little positive thing right now. There's 133 th three people in here. <laughs> Whatever, Gibby. What the heck? MILFs. <laughs> Hot MILFs asking for dates. We know where your search engine's been. Um, yeah, put something good, guys. We need some good in, in the chat before I hang up. Everybody put one thing that's happened good in their life this week because it will be like... 120 people writing something good. It could be anything. There's no bad things. Is that Jimmy not? No. <laughs> Give me adrenaline. New job. Now I have two. Oh, that's good. I bought bubbly pickles. Three. Oh, yum. <laughs> Booked my holiday. Farmed over 200 potatoes in my Minecraft. <laughs> Oh, good one, Boomer. That's good. I don't even know what that means, but it's good that you got your potatoes going. All things rosy. A new puppy. Oh, what kind oh, of puppy? Got a new puppy? Thanks, Larry. That is good, yeah. I'm glad it's over. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, glad it's over. <laughs> it's like a year of being pregnant. It's like... Watching the Niners win. I'm painting more. Oh, good, Francis. That's awesome. I keep saying, is your first name Francis and your last name Shirley, or is your first name Shirley and your last name is Francis? I, I, sorry if I confused that. You're almost 44. Oh, Jay, happy birthday coming soon. Going to Disneyland. These are all good, guys. Focusing on good things, even if it's something just little to focus on in the world of craziness. Um, you woke up today. That's the best one. You woke up one, one day, one day more. I wish I could send them to you. Oh no, I missed your comment, Lane. Crap. 
<laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, Farmville crops are almost ready. <laughs> you bought a new duvet. Hey, Jane, that's awesome. <laughs> I just bought one too for the nursery, and it's like something about buying like new bedding is like so good. I love that. Drew lots of pictures. I'm I am a milf. Yes, I I guess I'm a milf. If you want to call me that, <laughs> I had to say. Yeah, things have changed since I've talked to you guys last. You're pregnant with emotion. Your comments are so funny. Okay. Niners, I'm wiser. Ring or ring order. No. I'm wiser. One year older. I have to go back and read. Oh the pickle oh the pickles. $185 a jar? What the what the heck? I want to make Leo a quilt. If you want to send anything to Leo or make anything or anything, I can give you my mom's address. She's coming to Australia maybe next month, and you guys, I don't know if it'll be done by then, but you guys can send it to my mom's and she can bring it to Australia. It'll save you so much money because the shipping is too expensive to send to Australia. Like a little box would be like $30. It's kind of like, I don't know. It might be better to like send things to her and she brings them. I would think that would be better. So if you guys do want that just send me a message and I'll send it to you but it's only if I know you I'm not going to give you my mom's address if it's someone I don't know <laughs> you have to be like in at least knowing I need to know who you are my mom is in the U.S. yes and she's coming I think the first uh, hopefully she's coming the first week of February so I think she's coming she's really scared I think she's in here if she's not in here she's really nervous about going on the airplane being that long of a flight she doesn't really like going on air flight, flying and like the anxiety of like traveling. So I hope she can come. If not, we're coming to America this summer. So if she doesn't come, we're going there and I can get the packages there then. So she's very excited. My dad, he said he'll come, but I don't think he will come this time around. Like maybe when he's a little bit older. But you'll take care of my mom. Yeah, I told her not to worry because I'll just get, like, like somebody from the airline to, like, come pick her up at the gate and, like, walk her to the gate and, like, make it where she doesn't have to worry. I feel like that's the best. Yeah, long flights are overwhelming, even for someone who likes, likes flying or likes traveling. So, I feel like maybe she's overthinking it a little bit. It's not as bad as I think she thinks it is, but because she's never done it, then, yeah, it's scary. I gotta go eat my food, guys. I'll see you soon. Make an Amazon wish list. I feel like I don't need anything for Leo. Oh, we do. I do want to get the sock, but I don't want you guys to buy me the sock. There's a sock that you put on his foot. It goes along with Hoss. Hoss bought the camera to it, but there's a sock that like you can put on his foot, and it monitors his heart rate and his breathing. So like at nighttime, you could. Like if something happened or if he's choking, it's kind of like to protect you from SIDS and some other things. But it's like the sock monitors his heart and his whatever. And then if something happens, this like thing starts going crazy and it wakes you up. Yeah, but it's really expensive. So we've been thinking maybe we, James thinks it would be a good idea, but I'm like, it's kind of expensive. So we'll see. It's called the Owlet sock. Owlet. I think it's like three or four hundred dollars just for this little sock, but I'm like, I guess it's useful and you could use it. It comes in three sizes, so you can use it all the way till he's like one or two or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of expensive. <laughs> I'm like, do we really need that? Like, we could just use the camera. But it does make you have a little bit of peace of mind. It's it's if you look it up, it's called Owlet. Yeah, Karen, I know, it'll be fine. Um, it's called Owlet, O W L E T, Owlet, and the sock like velcros onto his foot. My sister was even saying like it's just gonna make you worry more if you have it. It's just first time mom dad worries like there's a lot of talk about Sid in Australia, so it's like we don't want that to happen. That would be terrible. But we've had little tuck so he's like like a little kangaroo pouch and he can't move and like he's just stays there so he can't choke on anything <laughs> but there's little sounds I can't relax I hear all the sounds and he'll do these little like thing Leo will be fine <laughs> 
Elaine, you don't need to send me anything. You've sent me enough. Leo, Leo. Ooh, I like it. He's in the Yo Army. He's definitely going to be taught how to treat people correctly and to stand up for people and hopefully help other people and teach him kindness. Um, it's cool to see him. I know. Isn't that crazy? He was inside of me. What the? Well, he looks really big underneath all this, but he's like tiny little guy. Um, he's 3.5. Oh my gosh. Look. It's the baby. He's out of the pouch. Oh, kissing his oh, it's, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Sorry. He's hopping around everywhere. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Where is he? He's out of the pouch. Hi. Earlier, they were, um, like, hugging and, like, cleaning each other's eyes and stuff. Yeah, the flies annoy them a lot. The flies buzz around their eyes and stuff. It must be so weird for you guys to see this in America, right? <laughs> it's becoming our norm. It's the same as, like, deer in Canada. Right? Yeah. But to but, see, like, a kangaroo, uh, like, hopping around. But even in, uh, in Melbourne, like, we never had this. Yeah, they're all here because we leave Okay, it's good. You guys, I had to go eat. <laughs> but I, James is off tomorrow, but he works on Tuesday. So that's Monday in America, and I probably will broadcast at least a little bit. I, if I'm tired, I might only do like just a little bit, but I would like to get back into broadcasting. And we don't always have to talk about baby stuff. So baby stuff is, can we, we can talk about it, but it seems like the last year, that's all we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get some rest. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you guys missed the beginning of this broadcast, watch the beginning of last broadcast and the beginning of this broadcast, and you can hear the whole story. make something saying that she has like high, high anxiety and then like see if they can hook it up a little so anyways see ya thanks for watching thanks for all the super hearts thanks for all the support and love and all the comments I, there's no way i can comment back to everybody's leo comments like but i saw them all i saw them all and thank you so much and we will see you soon all that it will be my screenshot. They don't care about handicap. She will have service. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That sounds like a good. That sounds like a good idea. Bye. See ya.